big thank you to the guys at We Are Stoke for sponsoring my match day vlogs throughout the season. For all the latest Stoke City news, be sure to check them out on Instagram, Twitter and Facebook. Links in the description. Hey up guys, Harvey SFC here and welcome to episode 8, 7, 8 of the Harvey SFC podcast. And it's, it's going great. It's going absolutely fantastic. The morning after the night before, we're going away. What a disaster. We're, again, joined by the regular Elliot from the Bear Pit TV. Say hello, Elliot. Hello. Jesus Christ. Where do we go from here? I've got no clue, really. I don't know. I just don't know where we go. I don't see where a win's coming from. I don't, I don't know, mate. It's stupid. We look at the table and... Um, let me just get it up. We can finish bottom at this rate. Luton got the jammiest draw at, Lute, at Leeds last night. Barnsley, I think, won. Yeah, shift. Barnsley won 2-0. Um, Barnsley won. And then other than that, it was good for us, really. But Huddersfield are playing tonight against Birmingham. Hull are playing tomorrow against Middlesbrough. And it'll just be our luck. They'll win. We've got Barnsley on Saturday. That's a six pointer in itself. Then we've got the mammoth task of playing Leeds, Birmingham, Bristol City, Brentford, and Forest. I can't see where. Yeah, four, I said. I can't no, see where four points are coming from, let alone seven, eight, nine to keep us up. No, me neither. Me neither. I can't. I said on the Borough Fan TV, I said we need to have. We need to get this first these wins out the way early because we're just gonna pay for it otherwise. Like, look, because like if we if we win, like if we won last night, and if we won potentially against Borough, and then we have something to build on. But if we just keep delaying it and keep delaying it and keep delaying it, we're eventually gonna get up to Forest and Brentford the last two games, and we're gonna think, oh, sh I mean, don't yeah. Hold on. Just that send us, no, just that send a text. <laughs> just saying how bad we. Um, yeah, I personally just think three points minimum on Saturday. Three points bare minimum. Just... Has then... to be three points. They, it has to, it has to be three points right now. It has to be because the players need the players deserve that. Well, we deserve that most of all, but the players need to do themselves justice for what they've done throughout this season. Like, if you're going to... like, Look at where we were in, in Jones's time. Bottom of the league, absolutely no hope. You know, these sorts of things here. Michael O'Neill comes in. Oh, my God, brilliant. We've won against Barnsley. That's, you know, that was an incredible win. Wigan, incredible win. You know, Sheffield Wednesday, incredible win. And we kept winning. We kept winning. We got ourselves out of it. And... The players just don't do themselves justice anymore. Don't know why that squad pre lockdown's gone. It's definitely not the side we've seen these last couple of weeks. Um, Reading, I think the draw, I think someone made a really good point on Praise and Grumble last night and said that Reading draw, they wish we didn't draw. They wish they'd, they wished we'd have got the loss because that draw ultimately paid, papered over the cracks. Saturday, I don't know what we were doing. And then last night was even worse. O'Neill is trying his best. He, you can look how wound up he looks on the on the touchline, walking to the dressing rooms at half-time, walking to the dressing rooms at full-time, in his post-match interviews. He's, he looks wound up because he knows he can't do really do anything with what we've got at the moment. No, he can't. He can't do anything with what we've got at the moment. And... I don't think questions should really be asked of him because he's inherited all this mess from Hughes, from, what's it, Rowett, from um, Jones as well with the players that he's had. You know, Hughes bought prima donnas, Rowett bought players that haven't really been good enough. Well, maybe apart from the likes of McLean and um, Klukas, but even they look out of sorts. You've got Jones who inherited players that weren't good enough at all, like League One standard players, which is, evident to see right now is where we are yeah i just it's the i will say it is the recruitment that is one of the problems here 
I mean, I don't want to call out anyone in particular for a recruitment issue, but it is. We've seen it for years, and we've seen it for years. There's, we the have warning a, we have a, signs. We have the a warning signs have been back. there. The warning signs have been there for three, three and a half years. They've been there. The warning signs. I said at the start of this season, we'll get it right and go up, or we'll get it wrong and go down. I said that throughout the whole of the summer. I said it throughout the whole of the summer. I said, we'll either get it right and go up and we'll be fine, or we'll get it wrong and go down. Even if we had gone up, I can't have seen us staying in the Prem for two seasons because we had sort of lower championship. No disrespect to some of the players we brought in, but we had lower championship to upper league one standard players. And we're trying to build a promotion charge with those sort of players. The recruitment, like I said, it's the recruitment. I mean, think, look at Nathan Jones's six signings we made, those three signings that we made. How many of them would you say are a successful signing? Davies. What? We'll, we'll go for him. We'll go for him. Okay. Davies played a no. cup, plays one cup game, makes a mistake. Whether that could have been ironed out with more game time, you don't He's know. He's just nowhere to be seen at the moment. I've That's seen cool. him playing a couple of 23 years games and, to be honest, not that impressed. So, yeah, we signed six on a free signing. And uh, so the next one is uh, oh, Cousins. Cousins? No, don't no. rate him. No. Don't rate him at all. Uh, the only one I would say is successful was Powell. But yeah. in, under Jones, he's been... He was nowhere to be seen, so I don't know what that was about. Gregory... Uh, Gregory was all right under Jones when he was partnered with Hogan. If he was partnered with anyone other than Hogan, it didn't work. Yeah. Don't get me wrong, his work ethic is fantastic. But I don't know what's happened to him. His first touch his first touch used to be all right, but now now it's just since New Year's coming, I think I don't really know what's happened to him. Like I went to the West Brom match and I thought, okay, Gregory's coming on, that should be all right. And a guy was sitting with me, um, and he just said, "I don't get this, Gregory, really." And I said, "Well, what do you mean?" He put, said, well, just watch him. So we watched him, and he was trying to run onto balls that he was never going to get, or he was trying to run onto balls that he probably should have got but didn't get. He's the, the that one shot that... against Albion as well, which was pretty woeful. The one that hit the post, I think. It's Birmingham, or...? No, the one that hit the post. Well, again, there's that one. That probably... A good championship striker should probably put that away. The one against West Brom was the really weak one. I don't know if he did hit the post. I can't remember. No, it didn't hit the post. It just went out for a goal kick. He just got such a lack of confidence in front of goal. Yeah. I don't... Like I said, I I said I don't get him anymore. Um... Who else was there? We are doing. We, like, by the way, we are literally doing this off the cuff because it is so sort of an emergency podcast. I, um, we are trying to think. Th- the, yeah, I did tweet out last night. Ward. 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 <laughs> he wasn't great last night. He's not quick enough. No. I think. I think the, there is a point I will bring up because I asked for questions on Twitter, and there will be a point I will bring up uh, in a bit with the. Um, Bauer situation, yeah, cheeky clue. Um, but yeah, Ward not for me. Um, finally, Lindsay. Lindsay, I think we bought him in for two mil. But yeah, to be fair, from what I've seen of him, he was shaky against Middlesbrough. That's what I will say. Shaky against Middlesbrough, yeah. But he had that really good spell at the start of this year. Millwall, West Brom, Swansea. That really good run, um, him and Bat at the back were really good. But then something happened at Derby away. I think it was just the a change of even like what well, bring. We kept that back four for a couple of weeks, and they were sort of gelling. Then we swap it, bring Timon in. I know Martin Zindy couldn't play, but we bring Timon in, and it all goes wrong, and we concede four. Um, yeah. Lindsay, I think, has been okay. Okay, yeah. It'd be okay, good. If we if we if the worst was to happen, Which I'd, probably will. I'd I'd play him. I'd play him next season. I'd keep him for next yeah. season. Okay. Um, yeah. Powell been fantastic under O'Neill. Uh, one of the shining lights, I'd have to say. Um, the other day, 
I think if we can keep Nick Powell in the League One, I think he'll be like our Joe Allen. And I think if we can keep Nick Powell in like League One, I think he'll be like our Joe Allen, sort of like in yeah. the in this in the third division. Because yeah. Joe Allen will be off to Wolves, West Ham. They've been interested, and there's no way he's going to stay in League One, even for Joe Allen's loyalty. Yeah, um, the only thing I'm not happy about with Nick Powell was that silly decision the other day. Red mist comes down. What can you do? I mean, if anything, that just shows he's frustrated with his player. So it shows he does care, which yeah. is what you need to see. Well, he's, but he's it is rel- a shame because he's he's a relatively local lad, isn't he? True. Yeah. Um, who else did we bring in in the summer? Tommy Smith. Been okay. Been yeah, he's been all right for us. So he, okay. first start wasn't great. Started to get really going under O'Neill. Don't know where he's been. He hasn't started anything. Well, he started against the Borough, but. I don't know what's happened, really. Just think, another one. I think if the team plays well, Smith plays well, sort of thing. Yeah, I think that's all the summer signings. I'm not sure if I've missed yeah. anyone out. I think that's all of them, really. That's all of them. I mean, we if we go to... through like, Jones' signings, like, in general, there's only two more left, and that's Bart and Vokes. Bart, not good enough for me. Get rid. Vokes, to be fair, when he plays, he does score. I will give him that one. When he plays, he scores. Yeah. He's not been consistent enough over no. his time. Um, I mean, he'll go somewhere else in the championship and then start getting 20 goals a season because that's what we do with Burnley. It'll be the yeah. same every single time. It's the same with a phobia. It's the same with Hogan. You know, it'll be the same with Vokes. Yeah. It'll probably be the same with some other players in that squad. I don't know if it's because it's like a lack of care issue or if it's just because the coaching is, there's a coaching issue at the club that needs sorting. Mm. And then if you look at the January signings, to be fair, good signings. Chester yeah, probably... brings some experience. Yeah, yes. but that's under O'Neill. Yeah, but we'll, we'll get onto those now. Chester, very good. I think brings experience. A little bit shaky at times. Does make a few mistakes here and there, but we're yeah. all human. Um, Thompson, from what I've seen, been really impressed. Um, bear in mind, I haven't actually watched any of these lockdown games. I haven't, I didn't buy the streams. Um, he was very good in the home games. I have to say, very good from set pieces, um, good on the ball, and then uh, Tashan, from what I saw against Hull, really good. Created that fifth goal for Powell. Why he's not getting looking right now is ridiculous. Him and him and Lucas in the midfield. Yeah. It'd be good, but from what I've heard, Klukas hasn't been too good in these lockdown games, especially last night. No, he hasn't been great in the lockdown games. He's been... I think it's just there's too much pressure on him because Joe Allen's got injured. I don't know if that's anything to do with it. He doesn't look unfit, I'd say. He just looks like he's got a lot of pressure put on him. Yeah. And he's starting to feel the weight of that now, which is a bit frustrating. He looks like he does care. He looks like he's trying to G everyone on, which is all right, but... Yeah, I just can't see anyone. He's just one man just telling everyone to do that. It's just ridiculous. You can't, everyone you can't do that for themselves. You can't win a game of football with a one-man midfield. No, definitely not. Definitely not. Um, Barnsley on Saturday. Biggest no, game in our most recent history. We're not going to get anything out of that. I can't. I can't see us getting anything. They'll be up for that after we put four past them. They'll be up for it. They won the other day, so they're in form. Oh, we geez, are just a bit of a sinking ship. Well, questions have to be after the players. Questions has to be after the players. I mean, look, what O'Neal's... are you doing during lockdown? That's what I'm thinking. What are you doing during lockdown? Yes, the club's been giving you like exercises to do, but what are you doing yourself during lockdown? Like, O'Neill made... Doing... Yeah. made a really good point in his post-match interview last night. And he said he, he, he needs to start questioning the players' loyalty and how much they actually care. I think it is true he's he's not wrong with that one because like we'll be the ones we'll be the ones that are going to Accrington Stanley on a wet Saturday afternoon in the down rain and where are they gonna be? They're gonna be off on their holidays to Mallorca or wherever they go. Mm. We'll be the ones that are there, thick and thin. Um I think we will have, if we do go down, um, can I say it's coming straight back up? I mean, no. if people think it's going to be that easy to come straight back up, they are Look wrong. at what happened in the Championship. Look, That's all I'm going to say. Sunderland is a 
you know, Sunderland is a huge club and they haven't even come straight back up. Okay. Portsmouth have been Portsmouth stuck down there for years. Have been stuck down there for years, exactly. Coventry was stuck down there for years until eventually they got out of it. So, and they're, they're all massive clubs that play in the Premiership. Exactly. Charlton as well, who have been in, in there before, but they took a while to get back up. Barnsley are sort of a yo yo club, aren't they? Yeah, sort of. You say Barnsley club, are a yo yo club. Um, between the uh, Championship and League One, but. Questions have to be asked to the players. Have to be. Not going to lie. Not going to lie. I can't see it's coming straight back up. Everyone said. People are saying we need to come down. No, we do not need to come down. That will be the worst thing that will ever happen. Because we will lose some of our key players. And we'll have to replace them. And you know what's happened last couple of times we've tried to replace key players? Look at um, Whelan. Look at trying to replace Nzonzi. Arnautovic. Shakiri. Bojan, key players like that, we haven't replaced. They've been gone for two, three years and we've still not replaced them. Yes, we have dropped a division, which obviously your, your players that we were linked with in those times, like your Axel Witzels, your Conor Playankas, your Yamalenkos, they're not going to want to play in the championship. So I can understand we're not replacing them with the quality that we could have, um, but we still haven't replaced players like Whelan, Walters, for years? No, definitely not. Definitely not. And it's just a crime. It's the recruitment, like I said, just been... I'll go as far as to say it's been abysmal. Mm. It's not been great. Um, where do we go next season? Because I think, lose on Saturday, season's a write-off, we're getting relegated. I hate to be pessimistic. I've tried to stay as positive as I can all season. Well, we I don't know to... where the win's going to come from on Saturday. Exactly. When we lose to Birmingham, I'm trying to find the positives. When we, learned, when we lose to Huddersfield on that Tuesday night, I'm trying to find the positives. When we lose to um, Middlesbrough before Christmas, I'm trying to find the positives. Yeah, and I will say this as well. I think questions sort of have to be asked of... I mean, I love the coach family to bits, but they took so long sacking Jones. Mm. So I didn't see it as much at the time because I personally backed Jones... But then looking at what could have been done if we'd sack him, sacked him sooner, you know, yeah. it's night and day. If O'Neill came in at the point where we sacked Jones after the um, probably the Huddersfield match, I'd say. Yeah. Then, or maybe just before the Huddersfield match, then that's another extra six points on the board, and we've got an extra point at um, Reading. Yeah. That would have been fine. Yeah, I think. It's just too little, too late at the moment. Yeah. Uh... Next season is going to be ent- entertaining. And I don't know who we keep slash sell. I think we try and try... On, I know I mind. spoke to you about this last night. We try best to keep the youngsters. Cause That's the, think, what, that, the two shining lights that are at the club at the moment, if they go down, are O'Neill, if he stays, and the Youth Academy that we've built up for so many years. Because the Youth Academy are going to get experience. Like, if Mo Sanko stays, promote him to the first team straight away. Yeah. Um, you know, I'd have him over Gregory any day now in the League One. Well, although Gregory was good for Millwall down there, so you never know really. But mm. like I said, don't really rate him. Um, Sorensen. So yeah, so last, yeah, last will be in there. So if you look at this right now, so Bursic went on loan to the Accrington Stanley, performed brilliantly. Yeah, I mean, Davis, is a, Davis has been a League One keeper, but got the Golden Glove last shaking. time he was down. Got the Golden Glove last time he was down there. Yeah, so that's a solid two options. Then you've got Blondie as a third choice. You know, yep. not bad. Okay, you got Edwards at right back. He'll be good in League One, I reckon. Yeah, yeah I think what well, he was very good in his first season in the Championship, and I think now he's been sort of not zoned out, but sort of pushed away because yeah. we have been playing with Smith, I mean, I don't, Collins yeah, at right I back. Why don't we have that competition for a left back slot? We have two pretty solid right backs. Why isn't there any competition for a left back spot? Yeah, I've... time and time and doesn't do it for me. You know, and um, Edwards at right back, two centre halves, Collins if he stays, Collins, and Sutar, Sutar if he stays, and Lindsay did... as well. You got another option there. If Fleetwood go up, I can see um, Sutar, Sutar staying signing. at Fleetwood. Yeah, yeah. Um, left back. Get one signed. Yeah. 
I mean, we just don't know. We need we need two left backs. I'd say get one with experience, yeah. and then get one as a first team player. I mean, yeah. Ward. I mean, we already got one with experience with Ward, but you can have. I don't know if he. I don't know if I really want to keep him on. Centre mid, Sorensen, yeah. Dunwoody. Sorry. Yeah, Dunwoody might be a shout. Um, Thompson. A, I don't. I wouldn't start Sorensen just yet. I would start Thompson a hundred percent. Thompson and Tash on a midfield would be good. Yeah, Thompson and Tash on midfield would be all right with Nick Powell just in front. Yeah. If he, if he stays. Yeah. Right midfield needs to get sorted out. Ince isn't good enough. See, I, I like Arthur Thalys, but he's not going to come to League One, is Well, he? I mean, the Arthur Thalys rumour wasn't really a rumour in the first place. It was just no, some guys on social media, really. I'd go... McLean if he stays. I want Macca to stay. I'd love Macca to stay, but I can I see it? I'd love Campbell to stay, but... I can't mm. see it. We'll get ten million for him because of his new contract. Um, right wingers, we've got at the club. We've got Ngoi, uh, oh, Kari, Kari I'd Matang. Have, I'd have uh, Kari Matang. Uh, no, I think he's more of a striker. But um, Trey Pemberton. I'd have um, maybe, but he hasn't really been in the first team for a lot. No. I've got. Uh, I wouldn't have Ngoi starting. I'd have Ngoi on the bench personally. And then Tyrese up front if he's Tyrese Tebow on the left wing actually. Ah oh, yes, Tebow, Tebow, Tebow. Yeah, yeah. Forgot he's, te- he's look at Tebow in um, what's it? Bolton. We we've seen it first hand, obviously. Yeah. If you haven't checked out the video, then make sure to check out the Groundhopping series. Little yeah. Promo. But um, we went there, and it was he looked brilliant. He did look like you know if he was playing games. That's another thing as well. Why, why did we send him out on loan? He was good enough to get in that team. The first, yeah, the team in August, he was good enough to get in. Um, I mean, we didn't play a system with wingers. That seems to be the problem. Yeah, I think that's why he got loaned out. But I don't get why he couldn't have sort of... The inch role, the inch role Inch played, why couldn't he have slotted in there and then sort of been a, oh, a free-roaming... I mean, Behind the strike, it hasn't been good in his normal position. So, what makes you think he's going to no. be good out of position? Well, to be honest, Ince, I think there was a stat last night that came out and said it was like the ball four times or something, something like that. Give away two fouls, didn't take on a man, one successful pass or something, something like that. Um, the players need to look at themselves in the mirror. I don't want to point the finger at anyone, but. I think I don't know what we do. I mean, could, mate. We could get the whole Northern Ireland squad. That'd be nice. Will Greg. Oh, if we that song rings out of the Brit, that'll be all right. You know, Will Greg, League One striker. Well, I mean, he hasn't performed great at Sunderland either. So, like, even if we do get these players, don't think they're just going to perform straight away. Exactly. Um, yeah, it's going to be an interesting season. Whatever happens. It's just, I I am just, like, to quote Roy Keane, I'm disgusted by it. Absolutely disgusted He's, by it. Like, I got offered to go and play football earlier. I said, no, I don't want to. Because I'm not in the mood. Like. I am, I, I am disgusted by it. Because I'm, this like, club. This even club even doing this podcast is winding me up. Yeah. Because. Yes, it's good to sort of the get it off your chest. Have, but the fact that we have to do this, yeah. It, could you imagine if I'd have been there? I'm to plaster my face all over the internet. Then I've got Wigan fans giving it full beans in the comments, like, uh, uh, you're, you're absolutely dreadful, to put it nicely. You know they wouldn't put you're dreadful, they'd put something else. They'd be using expletives. I, and I'm... There's, I didn't buy the streams because I didn't want to. I'm doing a watch along for Leeds away next week because I've got Sky. That's going to be fun. And that's going to be really yeah. fun, isn't it? Right, should we go on some questions? Uh, yeah, we can do. I'll just, I will say one thing actually. I just one. think with the players, it's appalling what they've done during they haven't done work during lockdown from which is for me why they haven't performed it's absolutely appalling this club means so much to so many people the amount of players that, people that have played here i know the amount of players that have played here but football's first ballon d'Or winner 
a World Cup winning goalkeeper has played here. A player who's got a hat trick in a World Cup final has played here. England's most cat professional footballer has played here. And you treat the shirt like a piece of dirt. Like, yeah. just, you do not know how it's lucky like... you are. You do not know how lucky you are to be wearing that shirt right now. I you do... need to wear it with pride. Like, don't get me wrong. If I got the chance to play for Stoke, I am absolutely dreadful at football, but I'd give it a go. I'd give yeah. it a go. Because that badge, that shirt, means a lot to everyone. And I know exactly, myself included, everyone in that ground, apart from the away fans, everyone in that home end, even the media care. Did you hear Nigel Johnson last night? Yeah. I know he's a fan of the club, but he spoke sense. He I mean, spoke Liam, sense. Lawrence isn't, Liam Lawrence isn't even a fan of the club. Liam Lawrence is just, you know... Taking us under his like sort of taking us under his wing, he's just sort of having yeah. like his adopter club sort of thing. Exactly. It means so much to him. It means so much to so many people. In Nor, I mean, we have a massive fan base in Norway, in Malta, even, and the, I've seen that. I've the, seen that exactly. personally. The Norwegian Stokies, how much it must cost them a year to fly over. I know flights may not be that cheap, but times that by your twenty-three home games, which they go to, times that by the odd away day here and there. You know, if it say thirty quid a flight, you do the maths. I mean, I've seen like Malta for like Malta. I went to a pub in Malta that is dedicated to Stoke, dedicated to Stoke. All right, and how much are they going to pay a year now because we're in the championship? And how much will they have to try and find a stream now because we're in League One? We thought finding streams in the championship was bad. Yeah, exactly. Enjoy next year, lads. Exactly. Right, so, scale on to some... Uh, go on, finish your point. I was just saying, it's so stupid. It means so much to so many people. The amount of players that have played here, and for you to be wearing a shirt, going players like, like, like giving Players it like Wilco, Hooth, Lawrence. I mean, yeah, exactly Players like that said. that would have absolutely ran through a brick wall for this club. Yeah, exactly. It's stupid. We need to find the next generation of those players. Otherwise, we're, we are just... We are not going to do anything we, unless we do that. We need to find those next generation of players. We need to find the next Robert Hooth. We need to find the next Glenn Whelan. We need to, or we can just bring Glenn Whelan back. That would be quite nice to get some murders in the dressing room. Um, yeah. You know, you need to find the players, next players, Walters. Players in pro- probably our two relegation seasons. It's, we won't be referring to that 17-18 season as the relegation season. We'll be referring to this couple of years saying the relegation seasons. Yeah. And... I'm telling you now, we wouldn't have got relegated in the first place if we had players like Whelan, Walters in that dressing room. Because I mean, you... Look at the times Whelan and Walters saved us. Do you remember that Hull match that was 3-1 to us? Shakiri scored a brilliant goal, if you yeah. remember it. I remember we were 1-1 and we were thinking, oh my God, we look on the back foot here. And do you know what we did? We bought Walters and Crouch on and they changed the game. And yeah. what do we do next? It's just left with Crouch at the end of the day. And they're not going to get balls into the box with players like Ramadan Sobby on the field, are you? No. Right. Let's go into some questions. Louis, should Moritz Bauer play and instantly introduced on Saturday? If so, why? Yes, play him at left back. He's our best option. I can't see it happening personally, but why not give it a go? I do think Moritz is part of the problem, though, however, because... Uh, the managers that we've seen, like Jones tried to clear out some of the bad characters, and I know that for a fact. But what he did, which was bad, was that you need to have like good characters and good quality. He only really got one of them right, just with the characters, really. He didn't really get the quality in. Um, so he has, he has, I would say he's part of the problem in a way, because he's one of those players who probably doesn't care enough. So I reckon, no, nah, I reckon if, if he played Saturday, he'd give it a go. Maybe I'll have a sit. He'd have give a sit. it a go if he played Saturday. Oh, my AirPods have run out. Hold on. He's just going to disconnect his. Uh... Yeah. There we go. Right. Next one from Adam. Should Davies start ahead of Butland? And what changes would you make for Saturday? What do you think is going wrong? And how on, earth, how on earth have we been out of the bottom three for so long with no consistency and no hunger at all? I think it's just a minor miracle we've not been in that bottom bottom three for. When did we come out of the bottom three? Sheffield uh, Wednesday. Out of the bottom three when we won against Sheffield Wednesday. So we've been out of the bottom three now for just over seven months. 
Um, I think pre-lockdown we'd have stayed up. Now I don't think we will. No. Um, what changes would I make? Bauer in at left back. Um, yeah, or Ed was in at left back, really. Yeah, give it a go. Um, Campbell needs to play on the right wing. Um, Powell back. Tashan in the side. Tashan. Um, None other than that, you can't really do anything, although we need to. Yeah. How far away is Tebow from being fit? Uh, I know he's not. I know he's at the season. It's the same. It's the same thing as Bojan's. Really, he'll be back in this, at the end of the season in pre-season. But then we'll do, we'll probably just wait for like another sort of to the end of the month, really, so we can get back playing. That'll be next season then. And let's hope. I'll just say, let's hope. Fingers crossed. It doesn't actually turn out. He doesn't turn out like what Bojan had after his injury, because he was. I mean, Bojan was good after his injury, but. Like you could see, he wasn't at the levels he was, and then he got taken out the side, and that was just the end of him, really. But so, yeah, Tom Smith, sixteen. I don't think it's the actual Tom Smith. Uh, do you think O'Neill will want to stay when we're in League One next season? I think he would want to stay. I think he would I mean, want he to has stay. A it just depends. Ireland job, so you can, exactly. he, he has the intention of staying, which is the main thing. I mean. I mean, there's managers. I mean, if you look at someone like Rafa Benitez, when Newcastle went down to the Championship, he stayed. So that's the sort of hope we need. That's the shining hope we need. That is a main priority that we need to get. Michael O'Neill needs to be in charge of the transfers next season. Not not Tony Scholes. Not well. Can't we don't, I don't think we have had a recruitment at the moment. Been, he has to have the final say every single transfer that happens because he knows what goes on inside the, on that field more than anyone. So yeah. he needs to be there, and the youngsters need to be there. Uh, Matthew Pass, do you think we will go down? I do. Yeah. I think we're going down. No, I think if we'd have had some of the, um, as Benjamin Bloom quotes, the holiday teams. So the teams that are mid-table, not really playing for anything. They're safe the from relegation. They're not going to get the playoff. Yeah, so your you Reddings, your QPRs, teams like that. Bristol City, maybe. Birmingham, maybe. I mean, yeah, like I said So before, we have got players. a few of the... The holiday teams. It just depends how Bristol's results go in the next couple of weeks. Yeah, like, and I put this. I put this on Twitter as well um, last night. I said the saving, the only saving grace we have is if Leeds and West Brom secure automatics, Brentford and Forest sort out their playoffs. They are safe in the playoffs by the time we play them, which I think they will be. And they play but a weaker side, basically. They'll play a weaker side because the champion, the first leg of the Championship playoff final, is. Three, I think we play Forest on the Wednesday or the Tuesday and the first leg's on the Saturday. But do you really see us beating Brentford's second team? Because if Brentford's first team could beat us probably by about 6-0 at this rate, so what are Brentford's second team going to do? 1-0 win? God knows. Um, Jake Cumberbatch, the team you'd pick for opening day in League One. Uh, we've already been through a lineup, but for the sake of an away day... Tell you what would be a good one, Blackpool. No, yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd happily go to Blackpool really if I can afford the train down there or something. But... Blackpool, South End aren't in League One. So, uh, Portsmouth. Portsmouth be alright. Um, I mean, we need to see who else is coming down as well. But um, I'd Barnsley do Barnsley away good. again. If Barnsley come down, I'd do that. If um, Luton come down, I'd oh, do that. Go down even. I want to. Well, I think what I want to do is try and get to as many games as I can this time round because I sort of I've had my A levels and it's not been the easiest time, so you don't yeah, do it. But I, I've I got will. a bit of time in hand and I will get there at some stage. So I'm going down with the ship. And unfortunately, yeah. that ship is the Titanic. I hate how people complain. Butland. Uh, this is from Harvey Williams. I hate how people complain. Butland. Um, I think what he's done is he's missed his defensiveness from Joe. We've defensively I mean, missed. Yeah, that's what my dad, I think that's true. Good point. That's very yeah, my dad true. My dad's a good point about that. He just said, um, well, the thing is, Bottenham wouldn't, wouldn't be making these mistakes if defence actually cleared up for him. I mean, that goal where it just went under him, that's, if anything, that's Ward's fault for letting him go past him. Mm. He had two sort of howlers, didn't he? Yeah. First one spilled it onto the bar. And then... The second, second one, one. Just went under him, and then it's been credited as a short cross own goal in the end. Yeah. 
Um, Such shape. a shame for Ryan as well. I mean, Ryan, what must he be thinking right now? I think he will stay because that's the sort of character he is. But, mm. I mean, his injury record's not been great. I just feel so sorry for him. He's my favourite player, personally. I just he's, feel so sorry back, for him. This eh? is the guy who's the captain who got to the FA Cup finals. The guy who's captain just for the first time in Europe. I just I feel so, so sorry for him. He's committed his life to this club. And yeah. the players give him that. A couple of... Uh... Questions from Shea Bell. Um, what signings do we need to make? Hopefully a new right winger. I agree. Left back. I, I wouldn't be able to say who because we don't know what division we're playing in. Um, and then the second one is, should Federici start ahead of Butland or maybe even Davies? Federici, Federici is to be seen. Federici, as far as I'm concerned, has left. No, I think so as well. Look at the training. Watch back the training videos. There's a corner goalkeeper's union. They show... Um, Jack, Davies, Joe, and um, do they show Blondie? I think in it yeah. there's a little Bl- like Blondie's flip from him. Yeah, there's one from Bursey. There's the picture of Bursey and um, Blondie's on the front post or something. Yeah. Okay. So I thought there's a drill. I'd assume they were doing the drill where they kick the the but ball and it's say, handling. The three next year should be um, Bursick, Davis, and Blondie if yeah. they go down to League One. Butland has to then You've go. We've got a good crop of young goalkeepers. We've got good he's at he's out of contract, yeah. not this season, the next season. So we, he will be able to go for about not the thirty million we've been asking, but maybe about a sort of twelve million price, or even I'd, I'd if, take if we can get it to double figures at the end of the day. Well, everything Stoke. How do we get out of this mess? Um, I don't know. How do we get out of this mess? It's I don't know. I I can't answer that one. There's, Me neither. I can't it's see. It's not as simple to from. say. It's not as simple. To, if we're scoring, if we're losing like six five, the, oh, I'd probably just say tighten the defence up and we're fine because we're going forward and scoring goals. We haven't. We've scored one goal since lockdown. One goal. We've conceded. A bit lucky as well, that. We've conceded seven. No, listen, we haven't conceded seven. I can't remember. six. We've conceded six. <sighs> Official Adam Binzi, what's happened to the team and why does uh, Butland keep starting and what improvements? I'd assume he's saying what we what we'd make, but Butland, yes, he's having another rough patch, but he's best goalkeeper at the club. Yeah, great. best goalkeeper at the club. Um, and then what improvements? We've been through that a few left times. Back, left back, left, left back, back, right wing. Uh, basically field. all over the pitch at this rate yeah. or just make changes but we can't I think, I think he's tried every um, formation he can um, it's just give Duke a go on, um, uh, against Barnsley but yeah I'm dreading it I'll still Go. pay for the stream but yeah score prediction score prediction for Barnsley 2-0 um, uh, Barnsley 2-0 Barnsley should we do a podcast next week? If we have to. Post Barnsley pre lead. Oh, joy. Oh, that's going to be an entertaining one. At least I don't have to pay for leads because I'm Sky. But... Oh, Sky, yeah. I'll be doing a watch along, so that's going to be really funny, isn't it? 7 0 to Leeds. I might not I might not even. Basically, on my videos, I put um, a theme. So, sports, gaming, then sort of themes. I might just put it as a comedy because it will be a comedy. It'll turn into a comedy, so. So anyway, yeah. Thank you, everyone who's uh, watched. Um, we're going down. There's nothing more to say. I um, hope you guys have enjoyed this podcast, mini rant. I wouldn't even call it a podcast. It's just a mini rant. Um, yeah, Barnes on Saturday, massive game. Um, can't see us getting anything out of it. Um Running going to be an entertaining one. Um, well, apart from that, that sort of wraps it up. Uh, big thank you again for Elliot coming on again. Um, welcome. I was a bit reluctant to come on, really, but well, it's it's what it is. Yeah, it's been good to sort of get it a little bit off my chest. Um, yeah, hope you guys have enjoyed. Uh, leave a like if you've enjoyed subscribe if you're on your round here I do apologise for the lack of Stoke content recently but do you really want to see me moaning for 
20 minutes every week. No, I don't want to be moaning for 20 minutes every although, week. Although one positive that's going to come out of today is that Marvellous is on at um, 9pm on BBC Two. So, yeah, if you want a bit of cheering up from Stoke, then that's yeah. probably the only place you're going to get it. Yeah, um, if people are wondering where Stoke content's been, it's don't want to make Stoke content at the moment because I don't really want negativity, but I felt this podcast needed making. I've tried to stay positive as much as I can this season, but last night was the last straw for me. And I've accepted it now. We're going to be a League One club next season. Um, and I mean, we have been here before, so just, just remember this. We have been here before. We've been here with my dad's time. The year I was born, Stoke were in the first division, and then we've gone on to do, you know, these things since so just because you know we're going to go down now doesn't mean it's the end of the road sort of thing like there is yeah there's a happy chance times ahead come back you know so just you know don't not support us keep supporting us you know it will pay off it will get better it will get we, it can only get better from here that's what i'm saying it can only as, get better as what i put on my instagram story on saturday night the only way is up exactly you know, i think on that note I think on that note, we'll live. Look, we are, we are fine because we've got good owners. Look at clubs like Bolton, look at clubs like Portsmouth or, you know, they've Perry. gone out to League One and they have, they've struggled, but they've had really bad owners in that time. They're really bad. Like, our owners are sound. Like, they may make some questionable decisions about the, the, you know, when to sack a manager, but everyone's human, everyone makes they're mistakes. They're pretty good with the workers. They're pretty good with everything else. So, yeah, why not just keep, you know, yeah. I... I can't see a reason why we can't. And we've got the right manager now, if he stays. That's the well, main priority. Yeah, if everything goes well next season. If everything goes well, yeah. We can, have a, we can have a really solid season next year if everything goes well. You know, we could even get to the Czech double promotion. trophy final. Day out double Wembley. promotion. Yeah, exactly. There's, there's nothing stopping us. If we, sort of build, if we go down, build a youth team, right? Yeah. There is nothing stopping us with the rate we've been developing these players. Look at Tyrese, how far he's come on this last year. Look at yeah. Tebow, how far he's come on. You know, there's nothing against us doing a double promotion. Just because we're going down now doesn't mean it's going to be all doom and gloom for the next 25 years. Look at clubs like Southampton. Look at clubs like Bournemouth. Look at clubs yeah. like Sheffield United. All yeah. been down in League One and they've come up to the Prem. Wolves. There's no Look reason at Wolves. why we can't do that. We've got good owners. I'll get slated for saying this, but Wolves are a very good side to watch at the moment. Yes. They've, they've, been, they've been down to League One, come back up, and in their first season in the Premier League back, they got to an, I hope, they got to an FA Cup final and they're in the Europe. Yeah, exactly. There is nothing against us doing that. I know. And the thing is, like, for the fans that, like, sort of, it's a chance to sort of do it again, really, isn't it? It's the chance to experience that sort of promotion here again. Like, for the yeah. fans that didn't get to see it, like me, I didn't get to see that. I only yeah. just got to see it when we were starting to get good. When I started supporting Stoke, it was a season we got to the FA Cup final, you know, season after we got to Europe. I thought, great, every season's going to be like this. And it's you know, gone. Pfft, I'm staying ever with since. It, so. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I think we're, we've left it on a bit of a positivity, bit of, you know, look ahead to the good times, you know. It's it's not going to be doom and gloom next year if we do go down. Yes, it might not be a one-year turnaround. It might not be a three-year turnaround. We might be there for a few years, mm. but Just there's no reason. Come on. We've done it once. We can do it again. Stick with us. Back us. Renew your season tickets. You might not want to, but renew your season tickets yeah. because it's going to be great. Go to the, the away days. Go to the away days that we might not have been able to do in the Premier League like Crow. Uh, that'll be a great day out. That'll do be a good your day out. I reckon Black we could pools. actually sell out the whole away in that game. Exactly. I reckon we will. Do your Blackpools. You know, great weekend out. Do your Portsmouth and your Plymouth. And again, another really good weekend out. There's no reason why we can't have a really good year if we go down. Yeah, there's no reason why we can't. And I don't... And I think that's the thing. Like, I always say this to people. Like, anyone, anyone in the world can support Liverpool, Arsenal, Chelsea. It takes a real football fan to support like clubs like us, really. You know, mm. clubs like Bolton. Just stick with us. You are a true football fan if you support this team, particularly where we are now. Yeah, I'll be there stick next season. Us. I'll be there next season, vlogging home and away, whatever division we're in. I said this. I said this from the start. I said Premier League, Champions League, non-league. I'll be there. I'll be there vlogging. If I am still vlogging, whatever time, um, because obviously the vlogging won't last forever. It's true, um, but I'll be vlogging next season. 
there's no reason why we, we can't have a good year next year. Yeah. And it's not all doom and gloom. And I think we've left it on a positive after the... We've, we've been a little bit down in the dumps, but I think today yeah. we've left it... We've left Main it on priority, a high note. Keep the manager and keep Blood, the youth team that we've been building the youth. over years. Blood That's the youth. Need to say. Yeah. So... I'm a bit in a better mood, a bit of a better mood, mood now, so I'll outro this podcast now. If you have enjoyed, drop a like, subscribe if you are new. Um, go and check out Elliot's socials. Make sure you watch Marvelous tonight. And uh, yeah, see you guys in the next one, whatever video one. that may be. Whatever the video that may be. Um, depends. If it, I might make a video on Saturday. Um, might do, might not. But I'll be doing a watch long for Leeds next week anyway. So it, um, that's only a week away. So, uh, yeah, hope you guys have enjoyed. I'll see you guys in the next one. Come on, Stoke. Go on, lads.